Good morning, my YouTube viewers. Crystal here. I wanted to make another video for you. And what this video is, it's a continuation of the video that I made yesterday. Yesterday, I made a video of, you know, which person did uh, Random Forest predict was going to be the president in 2020. And um, basically, I finished that video and I did a blog post on that. And then I thought about it and I thought, well, who does Random Forest say is going to be the winner for the 2024 election? Because we've got the statistics for the 2020 election. So uh, what I did was in my previous program, I combined the, I didn't, uh, I combined the um, 20, 1976 to 2016 election data and then added the 2020 election data to that to make one big data frame and then I called it series and so that's what I did I combined that information in my previous program but I haven't shown that to you because it's not necessary for you to see it um, and so now we've got a new data set that is a compilation of the data sets that I got from Kaggle and from MIT and I've uh, quoted those data sets in my program so you can see that. So now what we want to do is we want to find out, you know, who has, who does Random Forest predict is going to be the winner for the 2024 election because we've got all of that data available to us. So we should be able to make this prediction and see, see what happens, see how machine learning Fairs when we go to predict the U.S. presidents. But in this instance, since we don't know who the runners are going to be, uh, we're just going to predict the party, whether it's going to be Democratic or Republican. So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import the libraries that we're going to use, which is Pandas, NumPy, Matplotlib, and Seaborn. And then we're going to read the data file. The data file is a file that I had made in my previous program, although I made it last night. I just appended it to the previous program. And, um, and then I downloaded it. And I downloaded it and I saved it into my GitHub account. So that file is actually in my GitHub account. So we're just calling it train. And so we've read the file in so you can see that we've got the state, the candidate, the party, the year, and the candidate votes. And it goes all the way from 1976 to 2020, whereas the previous file was just 1976 to 2016, which was, um, I guess, 40 years, I guess, 40 years of um voting really so that means if it was 40 years of voting then that means we would have had 10 elections in 40 years so now what we do is we do info on this train so we've got two object files and three floats or three numeric two object columns and three numeric columns and then what we want to do is we want to test to see if we have any missing values. And no, we do not have any missing values because um, I took care of all the missing values in the previous, previous program. So there's no missing values. So now what we want to do is we want to analyze the yearly votes. So we've got 1996, sorry, 1976. And you can see that there were slightly more Democratic votes than Republican votes. And the winner was the Democratic. And I think in 1976, Jimmy Carter won the election. Then we have 1980. And so in 1980, you had more Republican votes than Democratic votes. And Ronald Reagan won the election. So now we've got 1984, 
1984. Um, I believe it was a Republican, so I believe Ronald Reagan won the second election. And now we've got 1988, and um, Republicans still in power. You've got George W. Bush won that election. 1992, Democrats were in power. It looks like the Democrats got more votes. The Democrats got more votes. So I'm not sure exactly who won because the thing is, is you can get more votes and still not be president because it depends upon the electoral college as to whether you get to be president or not. So we're just going to say that the Democrats got more votes. So I think that may have been Bill Clinton. I think it may have been Bill Clinton. And they're saying that when the Clintons took power, that's when things soured. So now we got 1996. Again, you got more votes in the Democratic Party, and I believe it was Bill Clinton was the president. Now we've got the year 2000. And so you had slightly more Republican votes, and I believe it was George W. Bush. In the year 2004, we had slightly more votes on the Republican side, and so I believe it was George W. Bush. Now we've got 2008, so we had more votes in the Democratic side, so it was Barack Obama who won. And then we've got 2012, got slightly more votes on the Democratic side, so it was, again, Barack Obama who won. And now we've got 2016, and this is 2016 because you actually have slightly more votes in the Democratic side, but it was um, Donald Trump who actually won, and that's why Hillary Clinton sort of contested it because there were more votes on the Democratic side, but Donald Trump won. And the reason why is it's not the number of votes that win the election. It's the no, it's to do with the Electoral College, how many votes are in the Electoral College. So what the big scandal is now is that, um, well, we'll talk about the scandal in a second. So we've got 2020. And again, you look how many votes we had in 2016. 2016, you had 65 million and 62 million votes. And now we've got 2020. You've got 80 million and 74 million. I mean, how, how did they get all those extra million votes? On the Democratic side, they got like somewhere in the region of 15 million extra votes. And then on the Republican side, they got somewhere in the region of 12 million votes. So they've got lots of extra million votes. And this is to do with the coronavirus because what they did was they were sending out absentee ballots and there are a lot of voting irregularities, which is in the news now. It's a big scandal now in the news. But that's what it cost it. So we get into 2020 and this is what is the contesting is it's not the number of votes you get that determine whether you win. It's the electoral electoral college. And then so like a state might have so many votes, but then this all of the votes of that state is going to go either Democrat or Republican, and that's going to go towards the person who's running for presidency. And so, and then in December, December sometime, they're going to have the Electoral College, and the Electoral College is going to say, you know, who won the presidency, and that's what the all the hoopla is about, because you can see 
from what we showed you in 2016, there were actually more votes in the Democratic side than the Republican side, but Trump still won the election because it's to do with all of the states either being Republican or Democratic, and it's also to do with the Electoral College, and that's why Hillary Clinton wasn't happy, and Hillary Clinton was claiming voter fraud, but she wasn't the president, so she didn't have all of the facilities and the tools available to her to try to rectify this problem. And then now in 2020, again, we still have more Democratic votes than we do Republican votes. But Donald Trump is claiming voter fraud and he's taking it to the Supreme Court. And they picked out a lot of anomalies, uh, such as dead people voting, such as uh, voting equipment, that voting machines that have a back door in them so you can go in and hack into it. Um such as uh, people who were leaving the state voting, such as people being sent absentee ballots when they did not request them, uh, such as people in nursing homes being voting, and all kinds of anomalies. So all of those anomalies need to be addressed. But this, it does indicate, because they were saying that in the middle of the night that Trump clearly had won the election on the Tuesday night of voting, but in the middle of the night they went and dumped millions upon millions of ballots in these counting stations. And that's obvious because in the 2020 election, you got like 81 million votes for the, Repub the Democratic Party and 74 million votes for the Republican Party. But if you go to the 2016 election, uh, the Democrats had 66 million votes and the Republicans had 63 million votes. So you have around 14 million extra votes with the Democrats and around um, 11 million extra votes with the Republicans. So where did they come up with all these extra votes? I mean, has the American population uh, increase that exponentially where you would have all of these extra votes. So that's something that needs to be looked at. I mean, just as a person that's, you know, not really into politics and doesn't know a lot about politics, you know, it's just basic math. You say, well, where, where did all these figures come up? And we'll look at, so we've got the figures for 2016. Let's look at the figures for uh, 2012. So these are the figures for 2012. For 2012, we had 64 million Democrat and 61 million Republican. And then for uh, 2016, we had 65 million Democrat and 63 million Republican. So that's roughly the same, just a very small increase in votes. So you can see that this, this definitely is an indicator where there definitely are irregularities in the voting. So now that we have analyzed the data, what we wanted to do is we wanted to create a, a data set. So we created this data set by using the pivot table. So you've got your year, your state, your party, and all the voting years from 1976 to 2020, which I've previously discussed. And then what we want to do is we want to make this time series. So we're going to create a variable called state, and that's called data set state. And we want to create a variable called party, and that's called data set party. And data set equals data set drop state and party. So we have dropped the state and party from the data set. So now the only thing we have is the years of voting. And now what we're going to do is we're going to define our X, Y, and X test variables. And so this is done a little bit differently. We're not going to be using the train test split. So Y train equals data set I loc, and um, you're only going to be using the very last column, which is 2020. Uh, X train is you're going to drop the very last column of data. 
X test is you're going to start from the first column of data all the way to the very end because you remember that in Python their number starts with zero and then what we want to do is we want to test the shapes and now what we're going to do is we're going to define the model and we're going to use added boost regressor with random forest regressor as the base ed estimator because I've had a lot of success with added boost regressor and random forest regressor and then so we get our answers we get our answers and we had a 99.87% accuracy on these numbers. And now what we wanted to do is we're going to predict on X test and, uh, and we're going to make it integers because the vote is an integer. And then so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new data frame. And we're going to call it State Party and Prediction 2024. So that's the new data frame <coughs> that we have started. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a graphical analysis of this. So again, you're going to see that there's going to be slightly more votes in the Democratic side than the Republican side. But as I said before, the way they do it in America, you don't win because of the number of votes that you've got. You win because of the electoral college. So let's say you have a state. So a state is going to be either Democrat or Republican. And all of those votes are going to go either to the Democrat side or the Republican side. And that's why Trump is suing these particular states and he's trying to get a recount but it's futile to get a recount because what they did was they separated the envelopes from the ballots so they have no idea of knowing which uh, ballots were not leaked are not legal because they separated the ballot envelopes from the ballots so they're just recounting the same old ballots all over again but they have no way of knowing whether these ballots are legal so it's just an exercise in futility so this is our predict winner this is what random forest thinks is going to happen in 2024 random forest thinks that there's going to be more votes on the democratic side than the republican side but again it's determined by the electoral college so if it if we won just on the number of votes we had then the democrats would win but because it's the electoral college determines who wins that's another that's the basis of another machine learning program so thank you so much for watching this uh video i will leave the um I will leave the um, the the web address in my blog post that I make, so you can read my blog post, and I'll get paid for you to read my blog post. And so, if you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share. If you like the work I do and want to make a donation, then um, please um, then feel free to make a donation because I don't have enough subscribers so I cannot monetize and uh, I look forward to making new videos for you.